sure there's nothing left on there especially since it is crystal and it is going to be see-through we don't want to leave any marks visible okay so I'm gonna go ahead and actually polish up this little bit right here because we're gonna stop it we're gonna cut it off right here at this point and we're gonna run a jump ring through there it also has cool little initials behind it DFC this is a 1847 Roger Brothers a1 plate little olive fork so let's polish that up real quick Switching over to my little buffing pad here. Timber. Let's get this all wiped off. So this is most of the way done. I take some old t-shirts, cut them up, use them to wipe off all my pieces. Whenever they get too dirty and damaged, I recycle them into grease rags. Okay, so we got our piece pretty shiny and finished. Test fit the stone again. Just make sure everything's in place. And this is going to be the tricky part for this particular stone because this is the part where we have to actually tap on it. And if there's ever a spot where it's going to break or crack or chip on us, it's going to be right here getting it back in there. So this side is where I want it. Where I want it to sit. So I need to push this side here. It has to come over here and fill this giant gap that's in there right now. See the gap in there? I need to get this pressed all the way over. And you know what I might try? I might try in my vise instead of hammering. see if I can get it to bend in place like that as opposed to hammering. Bit. 
So this part here, I need to just flip this over. And this has to come this way. So let's see if I can get it over there. Sorry about the pause in the commentary. <laughs> my spot this to come over and I think I'm gonna have to tap So I got everything where I want it. Remember, whenever you're tapping on your silverware, you want it to go, imagine a line going straight down all the way to the anvil. That's the direction the metal is going to go. So as you're hammering, this is going to end up pushing it straight in the direction you want it to go. This comes out just a touch. I'm kind of looking at it to see if it's going to clear all the, uh, the geometric lines. Because as I'm pushing it over, it's going to go straight and I need it to rest up against that edge and be straight. There we go. So now I'm going to be able to bring it right over, hopefully. The hard part about these stones is that the metal springs backwards so if you push it this far it's going to come back this far so you have to push it this far to get it to come back to where you want it so that potentially means that I need to get this to come way over which could be too far and ruin the stone Let's try bumping it this way. <coughs> Feels tighter. Let's see what we got. Super close, super, super close. It needs to be right there. That piece is touching. I just need for this very little tip to come over. Right there, just that little bit needs to come over. So I'm gonna hold my stone in place. I wanna keep it straight. Looking at it from the back side. Other rope. <laughs> and I'm going to run that. That's in a good spot right there. All right. Last couple of taps. This is always the scary part. I'm going to close this gap right here. So I need to hit down and get this. Okay, well, um, let's take it just a touch more. Is that right? So I'm holding it up 
it needs to go that way. Let's do one more. It's always one more, and that one more is the one that's going to smash it to bits. Everything is going to free float where we want it to stay. Get rid of that. I'm using brown board. It's a real thin, comes in, it's a real thin board. It comes in like a four by eight sheet uh, for like five or six bucks. And they make them. I'm gonna have to do it back in this. Uh, they make them in smaller pieces, but I needed one for, I made some bookshelves and I used this as the backing for it. So I cut it up into a bunch of smaller pieces so that I could use it to protect against creating the pits that are in my anvil, putting those into the silverware. So looks like we are about there. I'd really like it to go just another little tiny bit. Tiny, tiny bit. All right. Let's see. I need to pull this this direction. Alright, I think that got it. I'm just trying to turn this a little bit. I can twist it just that last little tiny bit, I will be perfectly happy with this. I'd like it to be touching or really close to touching so that it keeps it in its place where I want it to stay. So I have just a little bit of space there. There we go. Free floating. And always scares me. Anytime something doesn't want to do what I want and then the tool slips off, always scares me. <laughs> okay, so that's nice. It is definitely not going anywhere. It's staying seated where I want. The next step is just to make sure that your points are dull so they're not going to catch on anything. So I'm just going to take, because I did touch, touch the metal with those tools, I need to take those out. I need to be really careful though to make sure that I don't, um, jeweler saw, I need to make sure that I don't touch the crystal because those blades will cut, um, will put little edgings into the crystal.
just dropping everything today. Now we're going to go up in grits again. So the higher the grit number, the, uh, the finer the marks it's going to make. So we're bumping up to 400 right now. I'm going to back to my little polishing buffer. see where this is at as far as polished and clean the marks off of there So we're fully captured. It's still free floating, but it has a little bit of wiggle room. It's staying where I want it to stay. Our points are nice and straight. Um, 
Let's see. So our next part, we're going to clip off this top piece here. Right up here where, actually, hmm. So I'm not sure if I want to take it off right here and keep it short or if I want to bring it up here and capture this part. Just kind of have to, I want to kind of keep everything about the stone, but at the same time I want you to know that it was an olive fork. And one of the big things, oh, here we go. So the DFC in the back goes up that little bit. I'm keeping it. So I'm using these bolt cutters. These are 14 inch bolt cutters. I found that it's a lot easier to cut the silverware of the bolt cutters and get a lot more accurate cut. Doesn't cause stress to the stone. And I can keep everything right where I want it. So for this, I'm going to take my file and I'm holding on to the stone and the silverware. I'm just going to round off the part that I just clipped off because there's a little burr on the top where it's squished together and then cut. Taking off that that burr and just rough shaping it. So there it got off that little burr. So it's rough rounded. Go back to our Dremel. Going back to the sanding drum. And we're just going to smooth all this out and give it a nice clean look. Okay, so that piece is has its rough shape. I'm going to take now, and it's still pretty flat. I'm going to take my punch, my center punch, get the spot for my hole. I'm making sure that my crystal or stone, because it's poking out the back, is off of the anvil. Get my spot picked out here. Okay, and I'm using a a. 1 16th inch cobalt bit in my drill press here. I drill through some stainless every once in a while and the 16th or the cobalt is the one that seems to make it through. There we go. have a little bit of flashing there that I want to get off.
so I've got my flashing off of there. There's nothing sharp on the front or back side now. And I have another little Dremel tool. Fits right inside there. And I use this to make sure my, my hole is lined up so that whenever the jump ring comes through, it's nice and straight and it's centered. Back to the buffing wheel, finish this piece up. So now I've got the end nice and smooth and clean. I'm going to go back to my small buffing wheel here and I'll polish it up. I'll get it nice and shiny everywhere I can and then we'll finish it up. See what we got here. So anytime you're wrapping stones, you have places that you can't get to with your small polishers. And something like this you can't put in your tumbler because it will crack and chip and really dull the stone. Some stones you can, but stuff like this in the crystals, I don't recommend it. Um, so what I do as I look for everything and what I'll do is I take a q-tip and I cut it off right at basically the head I just kind of round it back out after and I'll put it in my Dremel tool now if you have a regular Dremel you can probably can probably just fit this right in there but mine is a 330 seconds size um, opening so I'm going to take this real easy just put a little bit of polishing compound on it and then I'm going to get in these small spots I couldn't get into before. Sometimes you get a little clump on there. Just cut that right off and Go again. As long as you're not down to the nub, to the, to the little stick. I mean, you can even polish through that stick because it's still 
nice and soft. There we go. I think that's about it. One more spot here. All right. Let's put a jump ring on this guy. And I always finish them off in the ultrasonic. I don't have a tumbler. I got an ultrasonic first. So my tumbler's on the list. <laughs> Let's grab a couple. guys find my seam and I always want the jump rings to be as tight as possible and I shouldn't have any any kind of a burr or scratch feeling to them because you don't want them to catch on stuff so there we go Herkimer diamond. Put it on the test necklace. This one always stays in the shop. It gets used for the pictures and and things because it's more about the stones than anything else. some of that out. And there we go. Herkimer Diamond wrapped in an olive fork. Have fun.